Hi everyone, welcome to tonight's Facebook and Instagram Live. I'm Christine Dahl with Fashion Angel Warrior and tonight is episode 84. We are doing a case study on the fashion brand Ministry of Supply. I am super excited. I love doing these case studies. This is now the fourth case study that we've done. If you missed the other three, definitely go back and watch them because they were awesome and everyone got so much out of it. So amazing. Ah, Naka, this is your first Facebook Live. I love it. Okay. So don't forget to share this video. If you're on Facebook, you can share it with anyone. Hey, Nicole, how are you? Hi, Adelaide. You can share it with anyone. Just let them know they can't actually watch it unless they're part of our Fearless Fashion Printer Facebook group. So they have to join the group first to be able to watch it. If you're on Instagram, tag someone. This will be in our stories for 24 hours. And then you have to go over to our Facebook group, The Fearless Fashion Printer, and you can watch all 84 episodes. That's over 42 hours of free information for you guys. Hey, Maria, how are you? Hi, Maggie. So give me your hearts, give me your thumbs up. Thank you for that heart, I love it. Um, I love to hear from you guys, it's like oxygen, okay? I don't like to do these by myself, so I wanna hear from you guys. I want this to be a two-way conversation. Let me know your thoughts, your questions, if you're enjoying these. Hey, Anne, thanks for joining. All right, so we've been doing these new things called case studies, and for those of you who aren't familiar, it's where we examine fashion brands that are successful, and we tell you the story of how they got started and why, in our opinion, they are very successful. Um, we dissect them, we figure out what they did. Um, I try to pick different companies, different categories, different situations, different business models. I've been trying to pick very different businesses to show you that it's not just one cookie cutter way or cookie cutter answer to reaching success. Hey, Alvatanza. Hi, Frab Rosa Linda. Thanks for joining. So let's get started. So today we're doing the company Ministry of Supply and we are gonna discuss how they went from selling 800 shirts online to hundreds of thousands of units in a year online. We're gonna talk about the one thing they're doing on social that has helped the brand the most. We're gonna talk about their marketing plan process and how they actually acquire customers, the number one reason their brand is successful, and nine more reasons on top of that that their brand is successful for a total of 10 successful tips for all of you. So, first of all, who has actually heard of Ministry and Supply? Give me a raised hand emoji, give me a yes, give me a no. I wanna hear from you guys, there's a lot of you on. Who has actually heard of Ministry of Supply? And I know there's a delay with the comments, so I'm gonna wait a minute here. Who's actually heard of them before? Kayla Jewelry, hey, how are you? Who has heard of Ministry of Supply? Give me a yes, give me a no, give me a thumbs up, a raised hand emoji. Okay, Naka, never heard of them. Shop Recover Repeat, yes, you have. Okay, interesting. Who else has heard from them? If you're watching the recording, I want you to chime in as well. Okay, Lana Dean, never heard of them. Kayla Jewelry, no, okay. Janet says yes, Maggie says no. Okay, so actually most of you have, are saying no. Okay, so interesting. Okay, so Ministry of Supply is a high performance business wear uh, for men and women type product that actually they use very technologically advanced fabrics and actually a lot of their fabrics specifically come from NASA. So the stuff that they use for astronauts is now being used in professional workwear, business wear, whatever you want to call it, um, suiting type of garments. And so it's very easy care. There's no dry cleaners. There's no ironing needed. They're basically redefining business apparel. And literally, it's out of this world, pun intended, right? So, hey, Dominica, how are you? So, give you an idea of the retail price points. They have men's dress shirts for 75 to 125 Blazers run about 275 And now they have this amazing heated temp jacket that automatically measures your body temperature and the weather outside for $4.95, which is not bad. Um, so they started back in 2012. Uh, there were four founders, Aman, Gihan, Kit, and Kevin, and they're all MIT grads, which brings me to reason number one, they are successful. The founders are super intelligent, okay? If you can get into MIT, uh, you can probably do anything, right? That's probably gotta be the hardest school to get into. 
Um, and they all have uh, various different degrees and backgrounds at MIT. They met at MIT in Boston. Um, and they're all like engineers of some sort, right? So kind of helps if you're pretty smart, right? And that's always going to help you be successful. Hey, Danielle. Hey, Brittany. How are you? Hey, Rakina. Okay, so number two, the reason they're successful is the product grew out of a need. So it literally was a need, a desire that they all had, or at least two of the founders had. Um, Aman began cutting his socks, um, would cut the tubes off his dress socks and stitch them to sports socks because he wanted to look cool and professional, but really wanted something that was more um, wearable and would work for wearing all day long. Uh, Gihan would bike all the time and commute to his job, and so he wanted a dress shirt that would work for both biking and while being at the office, right? They basically wanted clothes that they could wear to the office that didn't feel stiff, that didn't feel uncomfortable, that would be like sports clothing or fitness apparel, but have a business office look, right? So the product itself grew out of a need, which is always a really good way to start a clothing brand. Okay, number three. They're in the tech apparel, wearables, apparel, um, tech wearables, whatever you want to call it, niche. And they had really good timing on this. So obviously back in 2012, not a ton of companies were out there doing wearables. Um, it was around. And of course, there were things like handbags where you could charge your cell phone and different things like this. But it wasn't as popular as it is today, right? So they were at a good time and they picked a really super niche type of product. Number four, they spent a ton of time testing. So I was actually, I had the opportunity to meet one of the founders. I met Gihan uh, recently. And so I kind of picked his brain a little bit and interviewed him knowing that I was gonna do this case study. And here is what he said on why the brand has been so successful. So he's quoted as saying, we've certainly made a lot of mistakes along the way, but we believe in iterative design and empathetic invention, rooting our experience in solving a challenge for our customers and improving a few products every season, rather than creating something from scratch every year that may be different or may, be, or may not be better, right? So iterative design, for those of you who don't know what it is, I actually looked up the definition for you, and it's basically a design method process based on a cyclical process of prototyping, testing, analyzing, and refining a product, right? So you basically test the first iteration of a design and make changes, make refinements, and do it all over again, over and over and over again until you have a final product that is 100% approved the way that you like it, right? And so they are known for doing this, and it's kind of crazy. The Apollo dress shirt, which is the first dress shirt they came out with, which has literally the NASA like polymers built into the fabric of the shirt is their best selling uh, item to date. And they literally spent over a year developing this one dress shirt and it's literally a dress shirt. So the design of the shirt is really not that much different. There are a couple of things. They have like a curved back yoke and some things about the collar, but really the design of the shirt is not anything new. It's all in the technology of the fabric. So anyone that's ever tried to develop your own fabric from scratch knows that it is a very long process. And so I'm not surprised that it took them a year to develop this Apollo shirt. And that's honestly one of the reasons they are so successful. They don't come up with new products all the time. A lot of people come to me and say, oh, I think I need more product on my website. That's why my stuff's not selling. Most likely that's not why your stuff's not selling. Your stuff's not selling because most likely you don't have the traffic. That's usually the number one case. And then second, you're not targeting the right customer. So you have something on your site and then you need to find out who actually wants what it is that you have rather than trying to uh, diversify and do all these different types of products and try to please everyone. Just find a very small niche that works for you and the type of product that you have and go after that niche and we can help you to do that. Okay. The fifth reason they are very successful, they were successfully fundraised on Kickstarter. Not once, not twice, but three times. So, and I actually use them as an example in my crowdfunding online course that I teach because they were so successful. And one of the keys that I talk about in the course as to why they were successful with crowdfunding is because they, especially in the very beginning with their first campaign that they lost in, launched in 2012, they are quoted as taking every interview that they possibly could get. 
So whether a blogger had five readers or 500 readers, they literally took every single interview from a blogger, an influencer, a TV channel, like anything that they could get to get press and publicity, they did. And that's what really, really helped their crowdfunding campaign be so successful. Hey, Barbara. Hi, Rocio. Hi, Latoya. Thanks for joining. But they, so they did launch their first campaign in 2012. They raised, which was at the time, a record for any fashion apparel brand on Kickstarter, $430,000. Um, there have been other brands since then that have raised more than that, and they actually raised more than that, which I'm gonna get to in a minute. Um, but they were, were the most funded project on Kickstarter at that time with 430,000. So, and that was just for the Apollo dress shirt. Then in 2013, they launched their uh, performance socks, which actually have coffee grounds infused in them to filter out odor, which is crazy. Again, wearable technology. And they raised about $200,000. And then in February of this year, they actually just launched their intelligent heated jacket on Kickstarter. They raised over $640,000 with this jacket. And it's actually really cool, guys. It measures your temperature of your body and the temperature outside and will automatically heat up to the degree that you need it and cool down to the degree that you need it without you actually having to tell it to do it. It's kind of crazy. And it's been quoted as getting better over time. So the more that you wear it, the more it gets used to your body temperature. It is intuitive. Yes. Wow. I know. And it actually also charges your cell phone wirelessly. Why not? Right? Let's just throw that in there because everyone needs their cell phone charged. So, uh, and the jacket goes for like $4.95 in case you're wondering. Um, so they obviously were very successful at crowdfunding and crowdfunding can be a really good way to raise money. I highly recommend it. Most startups that are starting out, if you have a very specific niche, it is a good idea to think about crowdfunding. And if you're interested in doing crowdfunding, take our online course. It's so super affordable. It's $99 cracking the crowdfunding code. We literally go through the exact step-by-step -step process of what you would need to set up a crowdfunding campaign. You can go to it by fashioningdewarrior.com slash crowdfunding. Okay, they also, by the way, accumulated 1.1 million through seed investments. I believe that was in 2012. And then they also received another 3.8 million in venture funding in 2014. So they've obviously raised a ton of capital. And if you looked at their product, you'd be like, for what? It's just suits and dress shirts and jackets, but it's because of the wearable technology and specifically a lot of the fabrics that they have developed that is the reason they're doing so successful. Okay, are you guys liking this? Are you loving it? Oh, thank you. Thanks, Michelle. Thanks so much. Um, are you guys loving this? Is it helpful? Okay, we're on number six. So the sixth reason, in my opinion, that they are successful, they got proof of concept. And we've talked about this before in the past Facebook Live case studies that we've done. Proof of concept is so huge. You never want to go into everything all at once, you know, all eggs in, all chips in, right? You want to make calculated risks. So obviously they started first online and then slowly they started doing pop-up shops and retail stores. So in 2013, they had their first pop-up in Manhattan. 2014, they opened their second pop-up in Boston, and now currently they have seven stores across the nation, right? So they didn't start day one, let's open up seven stores, right? They started small, they started out online, and they kind of worked their way up that way, and that's the best way to do it. And the reason they expanded into retail is because they realized that people wanna feel and try on this stuff, especially because it has to do with the fabrication and it's not something that you can easily look at online and tell the difference. You have to physically put it on and wear it that they realize they really need to have retail spaces for people to come in, try stuff on, feel the quality, et cetera. Okay, which brings me to number seven. They also launched men's first and then took four years and then launched women's. So they didn't launch men and women together. They didn't decide, oh, I'm gonna do men's, women's, kids, and dog clothing, and handbags, and jewelry, right? Like. People come to me all the time, they wanna do all this crazy stuff, and that's great, you should have big dreams. I'm not saying you shouldn't have big dreams, but start small. Start with one category first. Once you've mastered it, it's much easier to do all the other categories, right? You don't wanna go crazy doing everything all at once, all in the beginning. Okay, number eight, 
They also have a very holistic approach to marketing and acquiring customers. So when I asked Gihan, one of the founders, what is the number one way that you acquire customers? This was his response and I actually really love his response. So he said, we've learned that there's no silver bullet, rather it's a healthy diet of different marketing channels, paid social, direct response, awareness and retail, and also feeding all parts of the funnel. Sometimes when we focus on a well-performing direct channel, it works for the near term, but doesn't build the long-term awareness. I liken it to a sugary diet, giving gives you energy now, but you'll crash later without some long burning proteins and complex carbs, right? He got a little technical there with food, but I think you get the idea. And I say this all the time, there is not one magic answer on acquiring customers and it's different for all brands. And you kind of have to see what's gonna be the best option for you, but everything works together. It's a holistic approach, right? It's the same thing like if you're trying to treat an illness in your body, you kind of need to look at everything, the mind, the soul, the physical things, right? I always talk about, you know, if you're trying to lose weight, sure, you could go to the gym and then eat whatever you wanted to and eat a bunch of junk food and pizza and ice cream and chocolate. You're probably not going to lose as much weight as if you went to the gym and ate right, right? That sort of thing. So the idea is everything works in conjunction with each other. And there's not just like one thing you need to do, right? It's not just social media or just email marketing or just SEO or blogging or social media ads or, you know, press or influencer marketing or celebrities. It's kind of a healthy mix of all of it. So it's really important. And that's why we discuss a lot of this in our digital marketing masterclasses and online courses that you kind of need to be doing everything and it's important. And we know that's a lot for newbie designers, which is why we now offer a lot of these services to our clients so that we can do it for you. And that way you don't have to worry about it. So you're welcome. Okay, so I also asked him, uh, what's the one thing on social media that's helping your brand the most? And he said, video content, which I've also been telling everyone, video, video, video. Video is so powerful. It's only getting more powerful. It is not going away. You know, a picture says a thousand words, a video says a million, right? So video content is huge. And so for them, they've been able to show their fabric in motion, not wrinkling, you know, seeing uh, vapors or water, you know, evaporate off the surface easily, right? They've been able to show a lot of things through video that you wouldn't necessarily be able to show in a photo. And so that's really been helping their brand, especially on social media. And additionally, he said it's provided a great means of understanding their customers and what value propositions people are actually responding to and how to tune that messaging. He said it's just as important to know why someone would buy your product as it is to know why they wouldn't buy your product. And I always say it helps to understand what customers are looking for and what they're not looking for, right? Video will give you all of that re response and, and more, right? Which leads me to number nine, they have the proper marketing message. So they've spent a lot of time perfecting their marketing and really figuring out how they can clearly define what it is that they do, right? Because they kind of created a new space, right? It's wearables but it's also professional workwear. And so they now have term, have come up with the term or coined the term performance professional. And to me, that really sums up exactly what they're doing, performance professional. They are taking performance wear, meaning active wear, fitness wear, that type of product, and moving it into the business world, into the professional world, so they're calling it performance professional. It's a perfect word, right? So uh, Gihan said, while athletic wear inherently puts performance first, the clothes that we wear every day are driven by aesthetic and performance or purpose, right? And that balancing of that messaging is always going to be the trick. So you need to know how to speak to your customers and you need to know how to convey what your brand does. And I say this all the time and we teach this inside our fashion startup intensive you need to be able to define your brand in one sentence. I ask people all day long, one of the first questions I get on the phone with people and I ask them, what type of product are you making? And they give me like their whole life story. All I asked you was what type of product, what's the price point, what's the fabrication, that's all I need to know, right? Like 
It should be a one sentence answer. And when you're talking to buyers, when you're writing your email newsletters, when you're writing your blog posts, when you're doing your social media captions, you need to be really clear and succinct at what it is that you are providing so that people who want it know you have it and they will come to you to buy it, right? And the people that don't want it can go away. I mean, you don't wanna entertain those people. You want them just to leave, okay? You wanna attract your direct target customer. And so this brings me to number 10, which is the number one reason that their brand is successful. Who wants to know, in my opinion, what the number one reason is? There's a lot of you on, so I want you guys to chime in here. Who wants to know? Have you enjoyed these nine tips so far? I wanna hear from you guys. Yes, Michelle loves the case studies. Awesome. Who wants to know the number one reason their brand is successful, in my opinion? This is the Fashion Angel Warrior opinion. Give me a yes, give me a raised hand. Okay, I got a heart there. Thank you so much. Who wants to know? I know that the comments are a little delayed on my end. Okay, Naka says yes, Brittany says yes, thank you. Shop Recover Repeat says social media activity. Okay, who wants to take a guess at the number one reason they're successful? Fab Rosalinda, yes, I do, okay. Maggie, very informative, awesome. I do, okay. Case studies give real life answers. Love it, thank you, Barbara. Mommy Yoko, yes, okay. So in my opinion, the number one reason their brand is the most successful, they have a huge email list. They started it out in 2012 before they did their first Kickstarter campaign with less than 1,000 emails, about 1,000 emails, okay? They now have an email list of over 100,000. And it's more than all of their social media combined. So they really don't have amazing social media. Their social media is okay. They have about 43,000 on Facebook, 51,000 on Instagram, only 130 subscribers on YouTube. They really only use their YouTube channel to inform and create videos about their product. And their Twitter is only about 5,000. So their email list is 100,000. Double the amount of Instagram followers, which is something I always say to you guys, the number of followers you have on Instagram, you should have at least that many in your email list. Naka said, I wouldn't have guessed that. Yes. So in my opinion, and of course, this is not Gihan's opinion because I did poll him and he said the number one reason they're successful is because they've been able to do the iterative design and empathetic invention and really test their products over and over and over again and test, uh, you know, get feedback from their target customer on why they like something or don't like something, right? Which is also super, super important. But in my opinion, it's that email list, 100,000 emails. All I hear is social media is the way to go. Yeah, that's because everyone talks about that. That's not what I talk about. I talk about how email marketing is still 40 times as effective as social media, and this proves it, 100,000 emails. And while I don't know their exact uh, sales uh, for the year because they can't share their public their revenue publicly, uh, Gihan was able to tell me that they're currently shipping in the hundreds of thousands of units per year, which if you take a look at their average retail price point, that would be around $25 million in sales. So if you have an email list of 100,000, you probably can make about 25 million as well if your average price point is around 250, which is what I'm quoting for them, right? Um, so Emails are literally worth gold. And I say this all the time. We talked about this in our holiday e-commerce sales masterclass that we just did. I will talk about it forever and ever and ever. Email marketing is not going away. It is definitely only going to increase, but you have to know how to do it. You have to know what subject lines to write so that people will actually open your emails. You have to know what content to put inside so that people are actually gonna click on the email and actually take action. So it's super, super important. So in my opinion, that is the number one reason they are super successful. Tara says, smart. Rocio, aha, yes. Now you all know why I could keep pushing you on building your email marketing list. Uh, Barbara, the emails are wholesale accounts. No, 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 these are direct to consumer emails. Like these are people. These are the everyday consumer that's 
that's uh, buying from them. They started out direct to consumer online. They only do direct to consumer. They don't sell to other retail stores. They only have their own retail store and their own e-commerce store and that's it. Okay, so if you loved this, go back and watch our other three case studies. We did episode number 79, which is our case study on the company round two. Episode 77 was the company Maison Cleo and 75 was the Red Dress Boutique. And we will definitely keep doing these case studies about once a month, as we mentioned. If you wanna raise money like they did with crowdfunding, take our online crowdfunding class, $99, which is insane, guys. Somebody literally took it and raised $20,000. I think they made back their investment, right? So go to fashioningewear.com slash crowdfunding. If you wanna learn how our clients have been able to go from two to 22,000 followers and 10 to 70 comments per post on Instagram, sign up for our brand new, super exciting, intelligent Instagram masterclass. If you are using Instagram and you do not know what you are doing or you're not getting sales or it's not being effective at growing your following and leading to traffic on your website and sales in your pocket, then you need to take this class. We are literally revealing all of our top secrets. People pay us hundreds of dollars per hour to reveal this stuff and we're revealing it to you guys and it's literally only 35 bucks. And if you're in the fashion startup intensive, it's only $10. The course is going to go up to $129 after the class is over. So make sure you sign up right away as there are still early bird tickets left. And if you're in the LA area or wanna be in the LA area or wanna produce in the LA area, sign up for our LA manufacturing tour coming up December 6th. I believe there are a few spots left. It's definitely gonna sell out. They always sell out. So definitely make sure that you sign up for that. Go to LA tour, the number six dot eventbrite.com. Next week, we will not be here because we'll be doing a live masterclass. This is our last free masterclass of the year, top 14 mistakes designers make and how to avoid them. If you have not taken this masterclass, you need to take it. It is free, so there's no excuse. And if you show up live, there will be some awesome, awesome bonuses. The following week, we won't be here because it's Thanksgiving and I want you all to spend time with your families and reflecting on what you are thankful and grateful for. And the following week, December 3rd, we will be back and we'll be talking about tricks to starting a business while working full-time. I know a lot of you are working full-time. You're trying to start something on the side. It's hard to juggle the two. I get it. I did it for a very long period of time. I totally get it. So we're going to talk about how to overcome that and some top tricks and tips to make that successful. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for joining. Tune in next week to our free masterclass, and then I'll see you in three weeks right here on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks so much. Talk to you soon. Bye.